Wasabi Wallet. I'm fairly private. What's up everyone? I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use your cold card wallet as well as Electrum desktop wallet to create multiple wallets within the same device. This is your daily session. Hodl the Bitcoin. Before we dive into the video, just a quick shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. They've got savings account where you can earn interest on your Bitcoin. They've got their Bitcoin backed loans where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to obtain a Canadian or US dollar loan. And they've also got their B2X pro um, product where you can actually get double the exposure to the price fluctuations of Bitcoin. If you check out the link in the show notes, you can get um, a and, and you opt to get a Bitcoin back loan, they'll actually credit you with an additional 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin. And secondly, we've got Rise Wallet. This is a physical Bitcoin gift card that you can pick up at a store near you. When you gift it to anybody, all they have to do is download the paired app, scratch and scan a code on the back of the card. It creates them a brand new Bitcoin wallet and sends them an on-chain transaction for the face value of the card. It's great, it is super idiot proof, and I love it for onboarding new users. You can check them out at risewallet.com. They're currently only in Canada, but keep an eye out because they're looking at expanding. So let's dive in. So today we are looking at utilizing the cold card with Electrum desktop wallet to create multiple wallets using the same device. Now, I should say that this video is going to be geared towards people that already have and have used their cold card wallet, maybe just in a basic sense. If you have not utilized a cold card wallet yet, but you have one and you need to go through the initial setup, I have done a video with that, which uses Wasabi desktop wallet. But even if you don't want to use Wasabi with it, the beginning stages of setting up this physical device, it's on its own, are at the beginning of the video. So I will link that video in the show notes down below. Secondly, if you are unfamiliar with Electrum Wallet, if you're unfamiliar with Electrum Desktop Wallet, I also have done a video on the ins and outs of using Electrum, and I will link that in the show notes down below as well. Um, I'll also be linking the websites where you can uh, either download Electrum or pick up a cold card. Um, and I will link to the videos that I've just referenced here. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at Electrum and this cold card wallet. Now this cold card wallet is mine. It is already set up. Uh, so as I said, we're not going through the setup process for the wallet, but we will be utilizing this wallet to create additional accounts uh, via this same device. So um, what I've done is it's plugged in, it's ready to go. I've already put in my pin, everything that is involved in initial setup. It's just a fully functioning cold card already. And what I have here is I have opened up Electrum on my desktop. And so what you get anytime you open up elect, uh, Electrum is what wallet do you want to open up? You can choose one that you've already created or you can create a brand new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the name of the wallet that I would like to utilize here. Now, just before, um, I'm going to show you here, if I hit choose, I have a handful of other wallets that I utilize. Now, this particular device that I'm using right now is actually the cold card too, because I've got a couple of them. Uh, but I don't want to use that same wallet file because it will be the one that already has all of my transactions and I, I want to keep these ones separate. I want essentially a separate account. Like if you had a bank account, you may have checkings and savings. That's kind of what I want to do here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, and what was the name of that? Just cold card two, no spaces, anything. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I want to go cold card two so that I know the name of the device I'm utilizing just because it's for my own memory, but I'm going to put in brackets a one. So like it's an additional um, account, account number one, 
on top of the existing wallet file. So um, that will be from my reference so I know it's not the original one, it's an, it's an additional account. Then I hit next. Now it says, what kind of wallet do you wanna create? Um, there's standard wallet, two-factor authentication, multi-sig or import. We're just gonna create a standard wallet right now. So I'm gonna hit next. And then it says, do you wanna create a new seed or restore a wallet using an existing seed. So you have a few options, create new, I already have a seed, use a master key, or use a hardware device, which is what we're doing. We're using the cold card. So I'm gonna click that option and hit next. Okay, and now it says, hey, select the device that you'd like, and it detects that my cold card is in and on. The only reason you won't see this is if it's not plugged in and the computer doesn't realize it's there. Okay, so I can hit next. And now this is where stuff gets interesting where you're gonna to need to play around in order to create a new account for this specific wallet on the same device, okay? So let's take a look here. Um, first, we need to choose what kind of wallet we want. Do we want a legacy, a uh, pay to script hash SegWit, or do we want native SegWit? So, just to break this down quickly, if you're unfamiliar, legacy it will create Bitcoin addresses that start with a one. These, um, typically I wouldn't advise using these because they will incur more fees. They are more data intensive when you go to send back out of the wallet. Uh, now, uh, P2SH or pay to script hash SegWit addresses. These are Bitcoin addresses that start with a three. When you go to send out of the wallet, um, it will incur less fees because it requires less data because of the way that it puts together transactions. And the transaction fees on Bitcoin are based upon how much computing data you are using upon sending that transaction to the network. So this helps you with fees. And then third, there is native SegWit. Now native SegWit will save you the most uh, computational uh, space and also reduces your fees the most. However, currently not all uh, online exchanges or wallets are able to send to native SegWit addresses. These ones start with a BC1. So, if you're worried about compatibility issues of people not being able to send to you, then you may want to go with uh, P2SH, which is the, the three addresses. But if you're not worried about that, um, if you don't mind, you know, if you have an issue, then sending to another wallet and then sending into Electrum, then native SegWit will be fine for you. And that's what I'm going to choose here. But I want you to take a look at something. Down below, there is something that says, you can override the suggested derivation path. If you are not sure what this is, leave this field unchanged. Okay, so we need to take a look at what a derivation path is. And I do have something open here. I'll include this in the show notes down below. Um, but this breaks down what a derivation path is. Now, if we look at the wall that we have open, um, right now the derivation path says M8400. And each of those fields actually has a meaning. Now, if you're not super technically inclined, um, even I was looking up what the specific fields meant before this, but it gives you some control over how the wallet functions. If you're unsure, I wouldn't play with this very much outside of what I'm going to tell you to do, but I will explain the fields, okay? Um, so uh, what we're going to be taking a look, the M, this is uh, this is essentially just like the the, the master key of the entire wallet. So it's kind of like the, the top of the umbrella and everything falls underneath it. So this won't be changed. Now the next field, the 44, or in this case, the 84 uh, is the purpose, okay? And so this kind of specifies what kind of wallet is this going to be? How is it going to work? Now, if you look, if we switch between legacy uh, the three addresses, the, the wrapped SegWit addresses or the native SegWit, it changes that number. It goes from 44 to 49 to 84, okay? And these just designate what kind of address, what kind of Bitcoin uh, address generation you're going to be creating, okay? So these are BIPs, B-I-P, 
Bitcoin improvement protocols, okay? Uh, so these are uh, basically the 84 means that you're gonna be getting a BC1 address out of this. That's all you really need to know there. Now next up, the next field is the coin type, okay? So in this instance, a zero means it is Bitcoin. There are other coins, obviously lots of other cryptocurrencies out there. For instance, in this little uh, explanation here, a 60 means Ethereum, but thankfully we're not using Ethereum right now. Uh, and then finally here, the last field that you're going to see, this is the account, okay? So the account would be um, you, where you can add a new account. So by default, it will always be zero with Electrum. It will just default to zero. But if you want an additional account, in creating this new wallet, even though the cold card itself is already set up, I can create a new account by simply changing the last number. By iterating upon it, I can backspace and change the zero to a one. Now you don't wanna do this for the second field here because that is the coin type. You just wanna do it for the very last field. That is the account, okay? So I already have an account under the zero. Now I have an account under the one. And I'm gonna hit next. And this will create me a wallet, a brand new wallet with a new account, okay? So it is the exact same device that I already have set up, that I already have a cold card, uh, or rather an Electrum account for on this, on this computer, but now I'm creating a secondary account. So uh, I'd like to encrypt the wallet file, which means that I would have to have this device plugged in in order to access it. I'm gonna hit next. And, oh, it showed up on my second screen, I'll drag it over. This is my wallet. Okay, now I've done a tutorial, like I said, on Electrum before, but again, across the top, you can see history of, of transactions, which there are none, the send screen, receive screen, all of your addresses, uh, all of your coins, and uh, if you want to be pasting any code or anything, which, you know, if you're not super advanced, probably not for you, okay? So what we're gonna do right now is we're going to send or sorry, rather, we're going to receive some Bitcoin into this wallet. So I'm gonna do a quick transaction. Um, you don't need to see my phone right now because I'm just sending a Bitcoin transaction to it. And there is, I'm, th this isn't a tutorial on how to do a Bitcoin transaction. I just wanna show that if we create another account on top of this, you won't see the transactions that exist in this account. So I'm just uh, pulling up another wallet scanning my address and I'm sending over some Bitcoin. That looks good to me, I'll send that. Yes, boom, okay, signing and broadcasting. And so that should pop up any second here. Hopefully it shows on this particular screen. We shall see. Oh, good, okay, so I got the notification on my other screen here, but regardless, uh, you can see that the color here changed because it this, this address has now received some coins. And we can see down below that I've received, uh, what was it, about a million Satoshis, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my, we're gonna go to the coins screen, and I can see that I have uh, a, an incoming UTXO, an incoming transaction for a certain amount of sats, and uh, it's not yet confirmed. So you can see the zero here. That means what how many blocks has it been included in? Uh, none yet, but it is in the mempool. It's waiting to be confirmed, so wonderful. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna close Electrum. We're gonna create a new account and we're gonna open up and we're gonna switch between the two so we can see the history and the non-history using the same device. Now, remember, I'm not unplugging this device at all. I've already put in my pin, it's already open and working on my computer. So I close Electrum. I'm gonna open Electrum once more. Let's hope it opens on the same screen. No, drag it over. Okay, so wallet, cold card two with in brackets account number one. Let's change that. We're gonna create another account 
on top of this. So I'm going to go next and we're going to go through the same process. We want a standard wallet. Uh, I want to use a hardware device. It detects my cold card. We're all good there. Next. Uh, also, I'm going to go with native SegWit on this one, but this is where we need to change it. We just go to the last zero. We're going to change it to a two this time. We already did one. Now we're doing two. Next. Okay, and we'll encrypt the file so that it requires the device. And I'll pull it over. Okay, there we go. So again, exact same device. It is open in Electrum, but look, there's no history. There's no coins. There's nothing here because it is a separate account um, of which you cannot see the coins. Uh, so again, if I close Electrum again and keep my cold card plugged in, if I open Electrum another time, I can go back to the previous account. This time, because I don't want to open the new account that I just had, there's nothing in it, I want to access those coins that I just got sent. So I'm going to go to account number one that we created. Next. Next. And two screens, got to drag it over every time. There we go. And I can see that again, my account is there, my coins are there, or rather incoming because they're yet to be confirmed. But now I have multiple accounts on a single device. These are all derived from the same seed phrase, the same backup. That backup can access all of these accounts. So it is important to note that if you are screwing around with the derivation path and you choose an account number that is you know, way down the line, like let's say you choose your account number to be like 798. Um, Electrum and most other wallets only check within the first handful of accounts, uh, sometimes 10, 20, it depends on the wallet. Electrum, I think it might be 20, but I could be mistaken. Regardless, if you don't remember the derivation path that you've made and it's not within the first few, then your wallet may not uh, recognize your wallet as having any funds, at which point you would have to go and manually change the gap limit of your Electrum wallet, which, uh, it, you know, it's it may be a little bit of a scary process to some people. Now, I did uh, bring up this piece here here. Um, this is from a forum um, regarding expert, what used to be expert mode in Electrum. Um, that has been removed. And so you need to actually go into the console tab and enter in some code to change the gap limit with however many addresses down the line your particular account was that you created. So I would advise keeping it within the first few unless you're trying to hide, actively hide your wallet and you have a special number that you're definitely not going to forget because otherwise it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Anyways, I'll link to this forum down below so you can take a look at it if you choose to manually do that. But besides this, again, we've got a number of accounts on a single hardware wallet um, and that's what we came here to do. So wonderful. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Again, all the links to the relevant information regarding the cold card wallet, Electrum, and all of the information I talked to, including uh, talked about, including uh, the the tutorial videos are all linked down below. Now, if you want to help out the show, of course, you can hit up the sponsors I mentioned, Ledin and Rise, as well as Wasabi Wallet, which I utilized in my other uh, cold card video. They are also great for coin mixing and adding privacy to your Bitcoin. And of course, if you really liked what you saw, you can always hit me up with a Lightning Network tip at my tippin.me page. Please do remember to hit like, subscribe, and share. It's always great to get more eyeballs on these videos. And with that, I am out. Have a wonderful evening, and I will see you next time for your daily session.